my first uh, encounter with my voice, with my operatic voice, was when I was about 17. Before that age I sang a lot, but not opera. Uh, I was studying piano, but we had classical music at home, but not opera, strangely. And then my mother, she was singing, she had a beautiful voice. She was singing in an uh, operetta chorus. In Holland you have uh, many of them. And she took me and my sister one day to come with her. And we were like, meh, we don't want to, mommy. Okay, for you, we go once. And then I started to sing with the other women. And this voice came out, this natural operatic voice. It was like, this is my destiny. I immediately knew and they immediately offered me the main role. And it was like, from then on, I was 17 and it was clear. My turning point in my career, I would say, um, was in Vienna when I sang Salome for the first time. And from then on, I sang it in many, many places uh, around the world. So that would be the turning point. Before that, I also sang internationally, but then I got really into focus on me, so a lot of success. To young singers nowadays, I would say to have a lot of advice from everybody and to have lessons and all that, and to put them in your rucksack if you want, yeah, to, to keep them with you, but to um, always be loyal and true to yourself, to your own inner voice if you want, and to let that speak through your singing voice, uh, to have authenticity. It's very important, I think, more and more so because there are many more singers than there were 50 years ago. So to have your own personality that shines through your voice, through that you can always give purely and you don't look like anybody else or sound like anybody else. That is also a thing, don't try to look or sound like anybody else. And another thing is that don't forget the, the old school singers, the, to listen to them to listen to the old Italian, but also from all other countries, singers from 50 years ago and more, uh, more early, to uh, not lose the connection to this true old school of uh, bel canto singing, and very important. <laughs> Kongold, to me, is, when I discovered him, uh, was like a, a phenomenon when I started to uh, study Heliana. It was like a whole new world opened up that one could write with, a, with the emotion that rich and that exaltic and incredible. And when I then first time this all got together, the singers and the orchestra, we were all blown away by this fantastic piece, as was the same uh, now with the Violanta. It's an amazing piece. So I absolutely adore Korn Gold. He is um, at the moment my favorite composer. And I would almost say if, if you can write music like that, as a young child, even uh, when he was 11, he, he wrote this uh, violin concert. He um, must have been maybe an old soul or maybe reincarnated by another composer or very musical person. <laughs> so yeah, I... Uh, I'm in complete awe. He had a very unique language, musical language of his own, I think. <laughs> Violanta, to me, um, is still showing herself to me while studying her, while now uh, having rehearsals with her, singing through her music through her words and she is not easy to uh, to find i have sung like also the heliane but she's more pure she was also written later by uh, korngold and she is sort of almost like an angel like a non-sexual being whereas violanta is very much uh, this this woman of flesh and, and blood you could say on the one hand she maybe is trying to hide her tr true feelings because she is living in this Venice of the 15th century. Maybe has to oppress her feelings in those days. Uh, women were not allowed to be as free as they are now. 
So this could be the case and that she then truly falls in love with Alfonso or the other thing is she may be really the vengeful woman who really wants revenge for her dead sister and being carnival is very easy because uh, the forms of the society are a little bit looser during carnival. So I think that ambiguity in her is very special. I'm still figuring out which one it is. She may be a femme fatale, like also through men eyes is Salome or is Carmen or maybe even Turandot. But she is a femme fatale without ever becoming fatale because she actually gives her life to not play adultery or to save this innocent man, if you want, who actually did uh, drive her sister into suicide but, um, and herself also. But I don't know, I'm, I'm still figuring it out and I would like the public to have his own opinion also. I think of is Violanta a victim or a winner? I would say she is a winner because um, she offers her life in the end and she does it voluntarily out of the spur of the moment, yes, but still. And is it a, a sort of a Liebestod like Isolde, who I also sung? Um, in a way, yes, but then for purity to give up. Um, her life, not to have to live through guilt to, for, because of the adultery she would have. And also because she really does love her husband, I think. That is a genuine love, but maybe not as fiery, as hot as she has with uh, Alfonso. And more profound, I think. With Alfonso, it's more on the surface. And um, it's actually very interesting. He is talking about Reine Lieb real, pure love, and she at the same time is singing about pure lust, which is of course a completely, uh, completely the opposite. It can come together, of course, but um, they've known each other like uh, an hour, so that's not possible for her to have this profound love, I think. So I would say now, uh, in retrospect, she is a vengeful woman who wants revenge for her sister, but has a, has a nice uh, encounter with Alfonso. He's very manipulative. She has no escaping a man like that, even if only for half an hour. And then she does choose the right thing, if you want, and gives her life up. I think she's a winner. <laughs>